Hey Vinyl Community, it's Michael. Welcome back to Near Wild Heaven. Today's video is part 3 of It Came From Cleveland series. Uh, this one's going to feature the uh, electric eels, mirrors, and the pagans. So the electric eels started, they were formed around 1973 uh, as an art project. Uh, lead guitarist John Morton was more or less the leader of the group. Um, he wrote most of the songs, and um, the Eels were very confrontational. They uh, didn't play around too much because um, at the time, uh, the bars in Cleveland, they wanted bands that played like top 40 music, so they weren't really looking for bands that were doing original music. But occasionally there was like, one or two bar owners that would allow uh, bands that played original music. But when they did get a gig, they would uh, like fight with the audience or at one time uh, they started a lawnmower up on stage and that got them uh, banned from the club. So the gigs they played was few and far between. Um, they probably played, the whole time the band existed, probably about six years, they probably played no more than five gigs total. And the first time I ever heard of them, I saw this ad. If you can see that right there. This is a ad for the Electric Eels, Rocket from the Tombs, and Mirrors at the... Viking Saloon on December 22nd, 1974. This was the first and only time that all three of those bands played together. And that was, I'm pretty sure that was the night that the Eels were um, banned from the club for starting up the lawnmower. But um, they were wild. They didn't give a shit about anything. They'd fight with the audience. All the time um, they'd fight with each other John Morton the leader had beaten up every other member of the band you know they were just totally chaotic and um, in 1990 this was released this is uh, a collection of their uh, recordings from their rehearsal room uh, it's called Having a Philosophical Investigation with the Electric Eels. Really good stuff. This is like true punk. I would have to say to describe this music would be like um, it's aggressive, loud guitars with uh, primitive drumming and uh, no bass and snotty vocals and hateful lyrics but i'm pretty sure the lyrics were done tongue in cheek but um yeah this was the first thing that was released by them uh, most of it like i said it was recorded in their rehearsal hall or rehearsal room and also in 2000 superior viaduct released this this has a lot of the same songs that were on the other one, but um, they were, there are different recordings. But if you notice this guy right here, that's Nick Knox, who later moved to uh, New York and joined the Cramps. So, uh, yeah, but these guys were like totally confrontational. They were ready for anything you know they fight with the audience or whatever you know and this is uh another thing this is called the eyeball of hell this came out in 2004 on scat records it's a, like a biography of the band there um the songs this is um some of the songs agitated 
cyclotron, uh, you're full of shit, uh, refrigerator, as if I cared, so that kind of gives you an idea of what the song contents is about. But yeah, the Electric Eels, um, formed in 1973, broke up around 1975. Really good, true punk band. Another band I want to talk about is, this is the Mirrors. Uh, something that would never do is the title of the album. Now these guys, um, the leader Jamie Klimek and uh, the other guy's name is Jim Crook. They were the ones that formed this band. Um, it also includes Craig Bell who was also playing with Rocket from the Tombs at the time. In fact, he was kicked out of Mirrors because he was playing with Rocket from the Tombs. So, there's that. But, um, yeah, but this other guy that was in here on drums, his name's Michael Weldon, and he's right there. I don't know if you can see it that too well, but that guy went on to do psychotronic magazine this is a movie review magazine that um, Michael Weldon put out between like 1980 1989 through 1995 something like that for about six years he did this really good uh, movie magazine lots of cool stuff in the uh, ads and stuff you would always put in there like that stuff like that and he was also uh, a Goulardi fan and I know I told you about Goulardi before there's uh, that but yeah um, mirrors were um, Oh, it's another thing I wanted to say was Jamie Klimek and Craig Bell would go see the Velvet Underground. They used to play a lot in Cleveland, and they would play at this place called La Cave. It was on Euclid Avenue, downtown Cleveland. This is from the Velvet Underground book that came with the box set, but I thought that was kind of neat. I needed to show you that. But yeah, they would uh, go see the Velvets and they would record the Velvet sets and then they would listen to those tapes at home and learn how to play the song. So they were doing a lot of uh, Velvet Underground covers, but they also mixed in uh, originals and they did, uh, they did manage to release a couple of singles on a local label. Uh, one of the singles was called she Smiled Wild, which was pretty good. And they have, of course, a huge Velvet Underground influence, but also, um, I'd say they're like kind of glam, like Roxy music, sort of in that vein. So a mix of Velvets and Roxy music, pretty much, uh, would be their sound. But really good stuff from the Mirrors. Uh, Andrew Klimek and Jim Crook and Michael Weldon, Craig Bell, uh, all local musicians, uh, really good stuff. There's people from uh, this one guy on here, his name's Paul Marotta. He also played with the Electric Eels. And then when Mears and the Eels broke up, a couple members from each band got together and they formed this band, the Styrenes. And they also uh, released a few singles uh, on local labels. Um, but they, they, they were more, uh, I don't know, arty than mirrors. 
and all, especially electric eel, they're way more arty than them. But um, this also includes as drummer Anton Fierre, who also moved to New York in a few years and then became a member of the Feelies. He appears on their first album. Uh, but yeah, this is really good stuff. And the styrenes, kind of quirky. Um, I really can't say who to re uh, compare them to. They just have a really quirky sound to them. Um, kind of unique. Some of the stuff's really good. Uh, Electricity is a really good song. Drano in Your Veins. That was kind of a, that was their um, first single they released in 1976, I think. Um, but yeah, this is a compilation of stuff that's called It Came Out of Cleveland. Uh, Styrene's uh, 1973 to 1979. So, there you go for Styrene's. Um, yeah, and then the last band I want to talk about is the Pagans. And this is the first thing I got ever bought by them. This is a single called Street Where Nobody Lives and What's This Shit Called Love. It's an original single from 1978. This is on... Uh, local label Drome Records. Um, this thing's on Discogs and it's going for about $250 now. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Great punk album. Or great punk song from the Pagans. They were a really good punk band. They started in 1977. Um, the band members were Tim Ali on bass, Michael Hudson on vocals, Brian Morgan on drums, and Tommy Mitoff on guitar. But this was their first release. This was recorded live at the uh, Hideo's Disco Drum, which was a punk record store in Cleveland at the time. And... Uh, the, this is the first full-length album. It's just a collection of uh, singles and tracks that they had recorded around 19... between 1977 and 1979. And this is a, a Swiss press, or it's from the Netherlands, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's on this label called Resonance. Really good stuff from the Pagans. Great punk rock. Great Cleveland punk rock from the Pagans. And they also released uh, this. This is uh, Family Fair. This is kind of an EP. There's uh, one, two, three six songs on here um her name was jane i do shunyata i stand alone slice of life and us and all of our friends are so messed up but yeah pagans this came out i think in 1990 this was released i'm not sure if it was recorded then but um yeah, Pagans, really good punk rock from Cleveland. They formed in 1977. Um, they broke up, I think, in 1980, but they reformed several times over the years. And finally, like, uh, most of the band, band members are passed away by now. But, uh, yeah, they were a great band. And... This is uh, another of their albums. This is uh, the Pink Album Plus. Uh, this is a reissue of an album that they had released in the 80s. 
it was just called the pink album but this is they reissued it with extra cuts uh, got a lot of good stuff on it um, they do uh, what's the shit called love street where nobody lives they do a cover of uh, 18 Alice Cooper song and they also do a cover of Final Solution, which was done by Rocket from the Tombs and Perubu. But yeah, this is great stuff from the Pagans. This is uh, on Crip. You can probably find this online somewhere if you're interested in this kind of stuff. But great album, great band. They also released this album, Shit Street. Uh, this has 20 cuts on it. Um, also, uh, this is, I think this is more like studio stuff that they had recorded over the years. And the other album was like um, live stuff. But uh, there's uh, some of the same songs on both of these, but they're different recordings. Um, but they do, on this one, they do... Uh, cover of I Can't Explain by The Who. They do Little Black Egg by uh, uh, The Nightcrawlers uh, and then a bunch of their own originals. Boy Can I Dance Good, I Juvenile, uh, Not Now, No Way. Really good stuff. If you like punk, if you like classic 70s sound of uh punk rock at that time pagans are it man you know check them out if you like punk rock because they are one of the best so i guess that's gonna do it for this one it's kind of a shorter video than usual but um i just wanted to get these done uh, i'm gonna do one more uh cleveland it came from cleveland uh, video and that's going to feature bands like these from the 80s the reactions spike and bane uh easter monkeys new salem witch hunters shadow of fear and x blank x so we'll be talking about those uh in another week or so and that'll be the last installment of my uh it came from cleveland series so if you lasted this long, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. If you like this stuff, leave a comment if you want. Um, you know, just keep in touch. So we'll see you later, VC. Thanks for tuning in.